guys, what's going on? John Pascavage here, and this segment, this tip of the week segment, I'm going to talk about the split shot rig. Okay, now, I'm always a believer in techniques that cover a whole lot of bases when I'm bass fishing, especially for tournaments, right? And, you know, I, I grew up finesse fishing, so, I mean, I grew up throwing, you know, rubs, Mr. Twisters, you know, Rebels, Rapala, Floating Minnows, that kind of thing, you know, the, uh, the, the cream, rubber worms, and, you know, I got into tournament fishing, and, you know, those still catch fish, but they're really, you know, they're not gonna, they're generally not gonna catch the big fish that are gonna, you know, get you in the money, right? So, what I often like to do is, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna fish this way, I like to kind of find techniques that are kind of hybrid power finesse, and also will cover a lot of bases. And the split shot rig is good for that because, you know, it kind of combines, it combines a Carolina rig, a drop shot, a Texas rig, and even a shaky head all in one. It kind of covers some of the bases that you would use those applications for. Now, I'm not saying that any of those are bad techniques, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't use those. They all have their time and their place. And you know, when you gotta, when it's time to use those, you gotta use them. When it's not, you gotta sit back and use something else. But, and I even have people who, you know, I'll throw the split shot rig on people saying, oh, well, you shouldn't use that. That's old man fishing. You won't catch anything big. And all I can say is that, you know, it doesn't seem, we, with, you know, the proliferation of drop shot in the 2000s and also, you know, the Carolina rig and a lot of other types of techniques out there this just doesn't really get quite the the credit it deserves so you know obviously it it can be a fish catcher because it, it provides an action they haven't seen and it's real easy to fish real simple real easy to do and basically all you need is you need a bait your favorite texas rigging worm hook and a split shot now there's a lot of different weights and split shots you can use for this I like a, uh, you know, they, they used to have what are called mojo weights out, and I don't know, I can't see, uh, rumor has it you can't really find them anymore, but, I mean, what I like to use are these, these are water gremlin lead split shot, okay, and these, you can use the size 7 or the size 5, either one, and I like these, these are, these are real easy to get on and off, these crimp on, and, you know, they're pretty widely available, you know, most places that sell fishing equipment, Sporting goods are going to have these. And, I mean, I know Walmart's and Kmart's and stuff like that, and Dick's and stuff like that have them, so they're real easy to obtain in a pinch. But anyway, what I got is a um, this is a three aught Gamakatsu uh, offset extra wide gap hook. Lost my train of thought for a second. And I have a uh, this is a black and blue five inch Gary Yamamoto Senko, tried and true. And I have the split shot on about a foot and a half, maybe, you know, maybe even 14 inches above the, the bait. And this kind of allows you to, this allows you to get the action of your bait and, you know, still finesse enough that you can catch numbers of fish, but it gets it down to the depths quickly where some of the bigger fish are hiding. It allows you to fish a bit faster, and you can throw this pretty much anywhere. And basically... You can throw it in cover, you can throw it in open water, throw it deep, throw it shallow. And I like to throw this, I mean, I'll throw this pretty much from the spawn on. I've had great luck with it all throughout the year, summer, post-spawn, pretty much whenever. I mean, this is, I can't think of many scenarios in those time periods where I wouldn't have something like this and want to use it. And as for the rod and the reel, it's a, uh, I just use a spinning reel. And I have a, this is a 6.6 medium action, or it's this medium, sorry, medium power, fast, fast action rod. I mean, I would just suggest any, you can use any, I like a good, you know, medium, medium heavy spinning rod for this application. And for the line, this is, uh, this is 10 pound fluorocarbon. I like fluorocarbon just for the abrasion resistance. And it does have some sensitivity, but you know, if you want to use braid or mono, that's fine too. I just, this is just personal preference. But yeah, let me show you how to fish this thing. Head cam, the GoPro here, and 
can see the rig. Just get us up here and about come up on a, this this spot right here. And I know we're in a rainstorm; it's a little muddy, but I actually caught one on this a little bit ago. But this spot right here, it's nice and water's a little stained. But we're in about 20 feet of water, and there's you can see there's some laydowns up here, and it comes up on a little flat here, so nice little spot. And basically, just get a nice cast out. And there's this is versatile because there's so many ways you can work it, right? You can drag it like a Carolina rig. You can hop it like you would a stick worm. You can... <clears throat> You can kind of shake it in place. You can almost, you can just shake it in place like so. You can, yeah, you can do that like a drop shot, work it like a drop shot. So much you can do with this. It's real easy to do. But what I like to do often is, I kind of like to get the benefits of those techniques as much as possible. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get a good cast out and I actually like to throw this near cover as well which we'll do in a second but hey yeah, get it out get a nice good cast and what I like to do is I like to work it kind of like a hybridization of a of a Sanko and a, and a uh, Carolina rig what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reel I'm just gonna reel up and kind of lift the rod about foot or two let it let it sit let it fall reel up the slack and do it again and the good thing one of the good things about this rig is that you can you can use any plastic bait on it you want you can use stick worms ribbon tail worms straight tail worms flukes soft jerk baits creature baits craws lizards anything you want pretty much and it still allows the it's it, you know it's finesse enough and light enough that it allows the bait to move on its own. You still get the action of it, but it gets it down there quickly. And also, when I fish this with a, a stick worm, I like to fish this. I, I like that it kind of does a. You, I don't know if you can see it in the water here, but and it's not it's not real good visibility down there. But it kind of, especially on this this lure, it kind of does a, it kind of circles to the bottom like a dead bait fish would. And falls it doesn't just go straight down like a rock so all right let's see if I can throw it right to the cover there and so all I do is I just reel it up let it sit for a while almost let the bait do the work for you move it a foot or two and this also allows you to cover some water. You know, you're not just, I'm like a weightless bait or whatever, you're not just sitting there waiting for it to hit the bottom. This gets it down there and it gets it to, it gets it on the bottom. And you can also use it to kind of feel out the bottom and feel for stumps, rock piles, brush piles, you know, lay downs underwater and pretty much anything. But, Real simple. Oh, and it's also, fortunately, there's no grass here at this time, but I like to fish this in grass as well. In fact, I like to fish this in a lot of the shallow cover near it because, you know, what I can do is a lot of people will, you know, they'll pitch and flip this, and what they'll do is, you know, they'll, they'll work the bait a lot, and they'll, you know, boom, boom, whereas sometimes the fish are so lethargic, you just got to leave it sit there. And right now we have some fish that are, you know, there's some fish spawning, some fish offshore staging, so it's kind of that transition period coming on here, so it allows me to target target both of those somewhat. And when I fish grass with this, what I like to do is I like to just throw it in, let it fall into the grass, and kind of rip it out almost like I would a, a lipless crank or something like that, or anything, or a spinner bay or something I would just rip out of the grass, right? And it gets down there quickly and it's, you know, it stays weedless so you don't get hung up. 
There's a good cast. Put it right next to that lay down there. See what happens. Let's just see what happens. And for the hook set with this thing, well, when you have a fish on, sometimes you're gonna feel it. Sometimes, sometimes you're gonna feel it. Sometimes you're just gonna see the line move. Other times you're not. I mean, I've had times where I see the line go dance and go straight out. Sometimes it's just a spongy feeling when you pull it up. Sometimes you just feel, you know, sometimes you feel a thunk, 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 like you would a Carolina rig. Sometimes, sometimes you reel up and then you see your line swimming off. But the hook set, hook set I like with this is, what I like to do is I like to wait until I can feel the fish on there and then I like to, instead of just a, a quick boom, quick hook set like that, I like to reel up, reel up as much slack as I can. So I can feel the fish on there and then kind of set the hook. So it's kind of like a reel and set type of hook set. Almost identical as you would a stick worm, which, you know, I'm fishing a stick worm here, so I'm fishing a Senko, so it's very applicable. That's pretty much all there is to this beast. This is. Great technique for pressured fish, great technique for fishing shallow, offshore. I mean, I'll fish this all the way down to about 15 feet of water, maybe even 20, depending on, you know, what's down there and where the fish are, and I got a fish. Actually, he's not that, I don't think he's a big one, but... Eh. You see what I did there, though? I felt the fish, and I just, I didn't... Do a killer hook set. I reeled up until I could feel the the uh, <clears throat> the fish on, and then I set the hook. So, all right, it's not a giant, but good two two pounder or so. And heck, on this lake, I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I mean, I'll take. I'll take a limit of those any day here. There's a lot, there's big fish in this lake, but you know, generally speaking, a good 10 pound limit in the heat of summer will place you in a lot of the tournaments. All right, there you go, buddy. I did the flip for me and everything. But yeah, real simple, real easy to do. It's fun to use, easy to use. And it's great for, you know, it's great for tournament fishing. Great for giving the fish a little something different that they don't see a lot of. And I definitely recommend adding it to your repertoire.